Hey guys, I'm back for round two of the 2021 National Open. Um, this round went a little bit better for me than round one, although I do have to say it was uh, a very, very tough game and the result was very much up in the air un until the, the very end. Um, to be perfectly honest, I really wasn't feeling well during the game and I uh, even considered just like offering an early draw um, uh, and, j and just getting out of there uh, to rest up for the later rounds. Um, but uh, once I got to the board, I think my you know fighting spirit kind of took over, and um, yeah, I managed to kind of survive long enough to get a, a pretty a pretty decent position. And then of course, uh, you know, no draw offer was was to be uh, had. So my opponent was David uh, Mubonu, who is around 20.53 FIDE, actually a little bit higher rated than my first round opponent, um, and his USCF rating uh, also. Um, higher than his FIDE rating, 21.97. So another tough game, I think, in the open section. There are basically uh, no easy rounds. And I actually did pretty much no prep for this game. Um, Mitch Fabian from the dojo, he's been helping me. He told me that my opponent uh, plays the Grunfeld and the Kings Indian, but I simply had no time. I just wasn't feeling well before the game uh, to do any prep. I was really just resting and, and hoping to, to recover. Um, so on the way down, I decided to just start with knight f3 and, and keep it really flexible, um, not really knowing what to expect and just kind of uh, playing it by ear based on what my opponent responded with. And lo and behold, he thought for a few minutes here and played the move h6, which, yeah, pretty much the last thing I was <laughs> expecting, but I was, uh, of course, very happy to see this move because um, obviously it's not a, a very good move and, and white should be able to get... Uh, an advantage from the opening, um, and from from my opponent's point of view, I'm not exactly sure what his intentions were with this move. Um, it does seem like maybe I surprised him with knight f3, and he was perhaps trying to avoid um, some prep, uh, or maybe this is what he normally plays. Again, I didn't really look at his repertoire, so I, I don't know. Uh, in any case, um, I decided to just play e4, and, and this is how they say, you know, you just play chess, <laughs> all prep goes out the window. And of course, h6 looks ridiculous, but I actually, I remember a game between uh, my former coach, Vara Kobian, uh, who played white against uh, Timur Gureyev, uh, who played an early h6, and actually we, we transposed to their game after d6, d4, and uh, g5. And objectively, it's definitely not a great opening. Uh, black def just weakens their king side early on. Um, but it's not like white just has, you know, a forced win. Like, you still have to play uh, good moves to kind of prove the advantage here. Uh, I think what I did was pretty reasonable. I decided to go for this setup with bishop d3 and c3. Uh, and my idea is just to keep my center solid. And the plan was to bring the knight to d2, and then to f1 and g3, and uh, try to use uh, some of the weaknesses on the king side. My original intention was to castle uh, queen side at some point, um, but of course it would very much depend on how black uh, developed his pieces from here. So here black played knight to c6, and I quickly realized his idea was to uh, play the move e5. Uh, and let's say if I play something like knight d2 here, e5, d5, knight e7, actually thought it's kind of a reasonable king's indian for black and he can play f5 soon maybe knight g6 knight f4 and i wasn't quite sure if, if white is all that happy uh, in this position so i decided that probably the critical thing to do here is to just push d5 right away uh, forcing him to come in with knight e5 and here i decided to trade on e5 and play uh, knight to d2 and i thought this was a very reasonable plan now um, my knight wants to hop to either f3 or c4 and it's a little bit awkward for black with the bishop on e5 because if he goes knight f6, I play knight c4, I take the dark squared bishop, and uh, my dark squared bishop becomes uh, a really, really strong piece. So on knight d2, he thought for a bit and he retreated bishop to g7. Uh, now I decided to finally hit black with h4. Now that I have no knight on f3 and uh, the g4 pawn won't be uh, coming with tempo, he played knight f6 and... Yeah, I wasn't sure what to do here. I mean, I could definitely take on g5 and go for something like this. And uh, probably best is something like knight c4 and, and just going after this pawn. But yeah, I wasn't too sure. And I decided to just stick with my concept. So instead of taking on g5, I just play knight f1, putting pressure on the g pawn and inducing black uh, to push forward with g4. 
Uh, now I put my knight on g3, and yeah, my basic idea was to develop this bishop somewhere, like bishop e3, maybe bishop f4, queen to d2, castle queenside, and then maybe one day open black up with uh, f3, because I assumed he was uh, thinking about castling kingside here, and I kind of wanted to be uh, ready for that. So here you go c6, which uh, I think is a really reasonable move, just trying to um, attack the, the d5 pawn. Uh, I quickly realized that there's actually uh, no threat with this move, and that's something that we, we should always strive to do when the opponent makes you know some kind of threat. We should definitely double check and see if it's actually uh, hanging. And it turns out the pawn's not hanging, so I just castled. Because the point is, if black takes uh, twice on d5, then knight on d5 ends up hanging. I simply have bishop b5 check, and I win the piece. Uh, and if black tries to attack the pawn with like queen a5 or something, I can always defend it with, with c4 if I need. Um, so here black plays bishop d7, so he covers the check in advance, and again, uh, seems like he's starting to take the pawn. And uh, of course white could play c4 here, and I think this would be perfectly reasonable, but um, I decided to see if I could just leave the pawn hanging for one more move, and uh, I, I realized I can actually make this move rook e1 work. And I prefer to make this move because I'm developing the rook, I'm keeping the bishop on c3 blunted, and uh, again, the tactical justification here is that if black takes on d5, actually I didn't decide uh, during the game, but I thought both knight f5 here and uh, as bishop f5 were both uh, very, very strong, where a lot of stuff is hanging in black's position. Knight is hanging, d6 pawn is hanging, g4 pawn is hanging. When the knight gets to f5, bishop on g7 will be under attack. Again, pawn on d6, pawn on e7. Um, so I, I quickly just evaluated that one of these moves has to be good for white, and honestly, I didn't really calculate further. Uh, and I would say that was kind of the theme for this game. I feel like my intuition was pretty much on point, and indeed black can't take the pawn, uh, but my calculation definitely uh, had uh, a lot of room for improvement. So here black goes queen c7, and uh, as soon as he made this move, I kind of assumed, well, maybe he wants to castle uh, queenside now, and finally I decided to play uh, c4. I was kind of tired of trying to calculate every move whether I could keep the pawn hanging, and if black wants to castle queenside, then I'm ready to just start attacking on the queenside. So for example, castles, I would play like either bishop e3 or I was thinking bishop f4 in the game, threatening to push c5, and if black goes c5, uh, then I would have time for e5, and to me this just looked uh, fantastic for white. I basically figured white was doing uh, extremely well. Um, so after c4, he goes knight h7, and yeah, I definitely didn't... Uh, believe in this move and immediately got uh, very very optimistic but I'm not really happy with my choice here I mean objectively what I did is perfectly sound but I, I feel like it was really just kind of uncalled for you know, I felt provoked by this move knight h7 and I decided to play very aggressively um, but really it was un unnecessary I could have made a move like rook to b1 here uh, with the point being that if black let's say castles or does something like bishop e5 I was expecting now I can just push b4, c5, and basically the problem with black's position is that he has a lot of kind of long-term weaknesses here. So it's like a normal king's Indian, but black has no attack on the king's side, instead just some weak squares, and so white can get their regular queen side play and just have uh, an excellent position. Um, also, bishop e2 was possible, which I didn't really consider, just going after the pawn on g4, and um, yeah, essentially forcing black to just go back with the knight uh, to f6 to defend this pawn, which is clearly you know, not what black would have wanted. Um, well, I ended up playing bishop f4, and uh, my calculation here was actually pretty simple. I, I expected him to take the pawn, because otherwise black is just suffering for, for nothing, and again, I have c5 coming, which looks really dangerous. Uh, and my idea was just to offer the rook with c5. And uh, yeah, intuitively I felt like, okay, it has to be good for white, I'm way ahead in development. If he takes on a1, queen takes a1, uh, the rook on h8 is hanging, and, well, black has a choice. He can castle kingside, but then I get bishop takes h6, uh, among other things. I also thought taking on d6 and pushing e5 was quite strong. Um, and if he castles queenside, uh, then again, I can take on d6, push e5, and, yeah, to me, this just looked like a completely lost position for black. I mean, white's down the exchange, but all my pieces are super active. The dark squares are super powerful, and... Yeah, I feel like black's rook is hanging, and uh, king on c8 is, is going to be super weak uh, as well. Um, but then I actually completely uh, missed his uh, response here, which was to just drop back with bishop to e5. Which I felt a little bit silly missing this one, because, 
I mean, he grabs a pawn, then drops the bishop back to e5, and it seems like white is down the pawn. Um, but honestly, I wasn't really uh, too panicked here because I felt like, you know, I'm ahead in development, my rooks are basically connected, my king is a lot safer. It's still not clear where black's king is going to be castling. I mean, as soon as black castles king side, you know, h6 pawn will be a, a big target and, and black's king will be weak. Black can pretty much never castle queenside now. I mean, there's just way too many open files. I just go rook b1, queen b3, and, you know, other rook comes to c1, and it's basically just going to be um, devastation. So I felt like white should have uh, full compensation here, and, yeah, of course, the, you know, almighty stockfish says white is, like, completely winning, like, plus 2.5. So, again, the intuition was right, but I wish I was a lot more precise, and given that my position was very good, uh, I don't think again, was necessary to, to sacrifice uh, material. So after some thought, I decided to play c takes d6, and uh, I took on e5 here, and I played queen to b3. I considered a, a lot of different things in this position. I, I probably spent like um, 15 minutes here. So I thought about moves like queen to c1, and maybe taking on e5 first, and taking on c6. Um, but ultimately, I, I, well, I decided on what I went with in the game. This was also an option to take on c6, then I thought bc, and um, if I take on d6 now, I think it's essentially pretty similar, and white should have uh, a lot of compensation for the pawn, but I wasn't too sure that I wanted to uh, go for all this. So I take on d6, take on e5, and uh, I play queen b3, and my idea is just to keep uh, developing the pieces. I'm not really worried about being the pawn down, I, I know I have full compensation here, and it's all about just getting the activity going. However, I, I definitely misplay things. So black plays uh, rook b8 here, just defending uh, the pawn. If black castles, then I probably take on b7, get my pawn back, and I have a pretty good position. And uh, here I decide to play knight f5, which uh, the point being just activating the knight. And if black takes, then of course I open up the e-file. And the line I calculated during the game was, let's say queen takes d5. I can't exactly go bishop c4 because then Black can take another pawn, queen takes f5, and defend f7. And here I think I'm three pawns down, and now I yeah, definitely would feel uneasy about <laughs> giving up so much material. Um, instead, my idea was to play this move queen b4, threatening the mate on e7, and the point being if black castles, which I think might be forced, um, then I can take on g4 with check. Let's say king h8, bishop c4. White's still a pawn down, but e7 is hanging, and I feel like the bishop here is going to be a lot stronger than black's knight in such an open board, and then again, I should have um, reasonable attacking chances. Um, that said, the engine points out that after queen d6, black is, is virtually okay, but yeah, during the game, I mean, it, it, it always looks like white has uh, a ton of compensation here, so I wasn't too worried about that one, but objectively, I guess what I did maybe wasn't best. Um, queen a3 is pointed out by the engine as being stronger, just immediately going after the a7 pawn, and I guess uh, prepping knight f5 for a future date. But essentially we get a very similar thing, because uh, after knight f5, black play knight f6, and uh, now I play queen a3 in this position. Um, and honestly, I was expecting black to castle here, where um, my intention was to take on e7 with the queen. Because this whole position to me felt like, you know, black's queen is just holding everything together. Like, without this queen on e5, I, I feel like white would just be immediately crushing, you know, putting my queen on the long diagonal, pushing e5, all this stuff. But this queen on e5 is like holding everything together, so I felt like trading queens here would be um, a decent choice. And my thought was that white should be better after takes, let's say knight takes, king g7, uh, and something like d6, followed by e5, and... Um, yeah, no longer uh, down a pawn here, and felt like my, my pawns were, were pretty good. Um, as it happens, uh, black played a6, which, probably not best, but, you know, he, again, has a worse position, and is trying to hold on to the material. Um, as the saying goes, like, if you're going to suffer, at least, you know, get something for it. Um, so I just uh, continued developing my pieces, rook c1, and uh, black played rook c8. And here I decided, after some thought, to play uh, queen to b4. So my idea with this one was to uh, not just hit b7, but actually defend the rook on e1. So that in case of uh, uh, c takes d5, for example, then I can take on c8 with check, bishop takes, e takes d5, and, and black can resign because e7 is hanging multiple ways and rook on e1 is uh, defended. 
Um, however, I really greatly uh, underestimated the, the right continuation here. I am not sure. I feel like I definitely considered this move d6, which is very strong. Um, definitely expecting e6 here. And yeah, somewhere I, I must have missed something because uh, perhaps I didn't see this rook c5 idea yet at this point. Um, but it is very, very strong. And the idea is that you finally get to dislodge the queen after queen f4. It's white's queen that can take the diagonal with queen b2 or queen c3. And basically black's position is just immediately lost. This knight on f6 uh, is hanging, rook on h8 is hanging, and it's, it's actually just game over. So somehow I, I kind of underestimated this one. Um, I also thought maybe black can play knight d5 here, I was considering. Um, but this isn't really something to be uh, worried about. All white needs to do is defend the rook on e1, let's say queen to c1. And um, yeah, now the knight on d5 is hanging for real. And yeah, black's position is, again, kind of falling apart. So that was definitely a, a big miss uh, for me. So I end up playing queen b4. Black goes b5. And now I, I actually play rook c5 on the next move. Um, but here it is uh, worse than uh, had I started with d6 uh, earlier. Because um, although it's actually the best move here, black can take on f5 as he does in the game. And uh, I actually considered not recapturing but throwing in dc. But the, the problem was um, black has this move queen to d6, hitting the bishop on d3. My idea was to push e5 here, and I was kind of trying to make it work, but at this point I'm already uh, approaching time trouble, and I was trying to make sense of this position where white has sacked a piece and has a ton of pressure. I felt like black could castle, which I think is the best move. Yeah, I simply wasn't sure if I have enough uh, for the piece here. Um, Stockfish says, yeah, white, white is better after, let's say, takes rook e8 and, and queen f4. I think this is the move that I really kind of overlooked because I yeah, don't remember calculating this one. Um, and basically the point is that white is now maybe picking up the h6 pawn, and bishop is hanging, and uh, yeah, basically white has a lot of uh, play in this position. So yeah, ultimately I didn't really uh, believe in this line. And um, when bishop takes f5, I decide to just recapture. Now black plays queen to d6, and already here I felt like I would kind of messed things up uh, a little bit because my rook is pinned to the queen and at some point black is going to be able to take on d5, um, but I was able to come up with a move here. I saw this one uh, in advance, so I was pretty much uh, relying on this trick with rook takes b5, point being black's queen on d6 uh, is hanging, uh, and if black takes on b4, of course I recapture with the rook. I felt like this endgame should be at least somewhat better um, for white, which we end up getting in the game. Um, black could also play the move c5 here, and it's very important that on this move white has the idea rook to b6, which I did see in the game. Again, hitting black's queen, and after uh, c takes b4, rook takes d6. Again, I felt like white is better, I'm still uh, more developed here, more active, and uh, pawn on a6 is hanging. Um, I also considered maybe black can play queen takes d5 here, but I felt like after something like queen to c3, um, probably white is winning this one, because knight on f6 is hanging, and if black castles, then I go rook takes e7, and uh, if the knight moves, then we even have like rook takes h6 in the position, and it just looked like black was getting mated here. Um, so we end up going for this endgame, takes on b4, rook takes b4, and now knight takes d5, which is probably a mistake. C takes d5 was better, and then my intention was to just take on a6, finally get the pawn back. And I felt like something like this, bishop b5 check, king moves in a4. I thought, okay, bishop versus knight, outside pass pawn, white is at least slightly better. I realized I'd kind of messed it up from, uh, from here, but uh, definitely felt like I was um, the one playing for, for two results. So uh, black goes knight takes d5, which allows me to take on g4. And uh, now I definitely felt quite good about this position because, again, I feel like the bishop is kind of stronger than the knight. And uh, black has a lot of targets that I can attack. He goes a5. And yeah, I decide to just try to play for activity here. So I start with rook c1. The idea is to maybe bring the rook to c5 at some point uh, and hit the pawn on a5. King d7 was played. Rook g7. Now I'm just attacking black from uh, this angle. And my point here was that, well, if rook uh, f8, then I have rook h7, and the h6 pawn falls, 
and if rook cf8, then I felt like, okay, black's position is very passive, now I can go for rook c5 and go after this a pawn. So kind of principle of, of two weaknesses uh, in action here. Um, as it happens, my opponent shocked me with this move, uh, rook hg8, which I just completely uh, overlooked, wasn't expecting at all. <laughs> and, and to my horror, I realized, well, if I take on f7, um, which I end up doing, black's idea is knight f4, and uh, hitting the bishop and the g2 pawn. And then after bishop f1, black has a nice trick, rook takes g2. Bishop takes knight e2 check. I tried to make this work for a while, but after king f1, knight takes c1, I felt like too much material was coming off, and yeah, I really wasn't sure what's, uh, what the evaluation is here. It felt like, um, yeah, I might be blowing it. If f6, which looks tempting, I think black just has uh, king e6, and I, I didn't think white has any advantage here. Um, so, after uh, rook g8, I, I went into uh, a deep think, although this is move 30, and I think we're down to under uh, 10 minutes, so I, you know, I really had to uh, uh, figure things out quickly here. I end up taking on f7, although it was actually stronger to put the rook on uh, h7, so that it's not a target later. And the point is after knight f4, white has a very nice move, g3. Simply inviting black to take on d3 with the point rook d1, we win back the knight, and then all of black's pawns are still hanging like f7 and, and h6. So I definitely missed that one, I decide to take on f7, black goes knight f4, and I play rook d1 here. And uh, yeah, now black has the option, can take on g2, um, but he kind of goes into a think here, not too long, he's also in time trouble, and ends up playing this move king to e8. I was ex definitely expecting rook takes g2 when I was probably going to put my king on h1, uh, and then uh, it turns out black can take on f2 here, because any kind of discovery, bishop a6 for example, black's king goes to e8 and, and hits the rook. Um, so I was expecting something like bishop c4, and then if king e8, this was kind of my concept, to go rook h7, and black's king is just kind of getting mated, like bishop is covering the diagonal, rook is covering this file, and now rook h8 is threatening not just checkmate, but also to win the rook, so Basically, this looked uh, very, very dangerous for black. What I missed uh, was that black can just block knight d5. And after this move, black is actually totally fine. Things are basically equal. I have to just bail out in, into the, the rook endgame. I'm not sure why exactly I missed this one. I think in my calculation, maybe this rook is still on uh, g2 and the knight needs to be defending it. So it wasn't just, it just wasn't quite seeing this knight d5 resource. Um, but in any case, he ends up going king to e8. I play bishop c4, although again, rook h7 was stronger so that the rook isn't hanging and I'm always threatening uh, to give this check on h8. So I kind of miscalculated this one, um, but in time trouble, I just had to kind of go with the gut instinct. And uh, here black ends up making the final mistake with knight takes g2. Now I can understand why he made this move. I mean, he threatens a discovered attack with knight to e3 and, and uh, to take the h4 pawn. Um, but again, it was stronger just to take with the rook and uh, take on f2, and if I go rook h7, as I originally intended, after knight d5, black is actually surviving. Uh, for instance, take, take, check, king d7, take, king c6, and uh, we're getting an equal rook endgame. So, um, as it happened, black ends up blundering with knight takes g2, and uh, here I am managed to find uh, the right idea, which is to go rook h7, and the point is I hit the rook which is going to be giving the uh, discovered check. And uh, unfortunately for black here, after knight e3, bishop takes g8, knight takes d1. I have a stone uh, cold killer move, bishop e6, uh, threatening mate, and of course the rook, and yes, yeah, just uh, just resigns here because the rook is lost. Um, so this was kind of a shock for my opponent. He ends up trying e6, kind of like a last ditch uh, resort, but essentially white is still totally winning here and uh, the the rest wasn't too difficult to figure out just bishop takes e6 knight e3 check i took on g8 knight takes d1 and anyway the bishop comes back to e6 black's king is cut off on the seventh rank and after any rook move uh, for instance he play rook d8 f6 it's simply game over as the king is stuck and white is uh, promoting next move um, so that was it. A little bit fortunate at the end there. I, I felt like I played the opening, you know, really well and, and got a, a huge advantage. But of course, uh, once the game got messy and, and uh, into the time trouble, you know, both sides started making uh, quite a few 
mistakes. Um, but overall, I felt good about this one, especially considering, you know, I woke up the morning honestly feeling uh, pretty terrible uh, for this day. And uh, yeah, it was good to have um, finally get, a, you know, a win under my belt after one and a half years of not playing chess. Um, yeah, it's really important for me to win uh, one game in the tournament because it, I often forget what it feels like to actually uh, win a game. Uh, but yeah, I was happy with this one, and uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'll be recording uh, round three shortly as well, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.